Wayne's World. Wayne's World. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> I couldn't help it when I saw the five four three. <laughs> so we're live. Welcome to the hash it out hour, or the what are we gonna call this, guys? What is this new thing we're doing? We're calling it the uh, uh, yeah. Okay. The real talk. Cannabis real tourism. Talk. Real talk. <laughs> Cannabis tourism. So for everybody watching us right now, or anybody watching us right now, um, I'd like to just introduce uh, kind of what we're doing here. My name is Victor Pino. Um, April Black and Season George are on this uh, wonderful live stream with me today. Uh, we are talking about uh cannabis tourism in the trenches right like we're talking we we have a lot of conversations with each other pretty regularly about um you know kind of the bs that happens in our day to day and a lot of people can learn from this a lot of people can uh understand kind of a little bit more about what we deal with as cannabis tourism operators uh but we have one rule on this show this this live stream and the one rule is you have to actually have had functional tourism experience <laughs> To be on the show so yeah, we hear a lot of times talk about it you can't talk about it you actually have to have run paid tours so that's we'll bring you on if you have something valuable to say we'll see you next week but in the meantime <laughs> i want to introduce to you guys april black take it away april well hey it's me april black from higher way travel and i've been bringing y'all tours for a long time and I'm in good company with Season and Victor, and we have some stories to tell. And maybe if you're interested in running your own tours in cannabis tourism, we can have some tips, and you can learn a little bit from us, and you know, make your tours a super soaring success. That about sums it up. We're done here. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Uh, season, tell us, Season George. What are you, tell us a little bit about you and, and what you're up to. Well, for me, I'm hoping to learn a lot from you guys. Yeah, I agree with April. I am in good company. You guys are the real professionals because let's face it, I'm a cannabis farmer. I never really expected to be a hospitality expert, but I'm learning. And it's really just about being, you know, available and being nice. So, um, I can definitely... service minded, right? That's what we talk about a lot, right? Yes. And it's, you know, about the experience and keeping the vibes high, you know, and relating a story that's meaningful that somebody can, can relate to, you know, mm -hmm. we don't want them to just be like looking in a fishbowl. We want it for me. I want it to, to enrich their life. So, and now in the face of kind of what's happening in the industry right now, this kind of ultimate meltdown of prices and, you know, there's mergers and acquisitions happening. There's companies going under every day. It's like the uh, it's like the badlands we've entered of uh, of, of cannabis uh, cannabis history. And uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about. Uh, I want to throw us back to a conversation uh, we've had a lot right together, uh, which is everybody's always talking about how cannabis tourism is going to save cannabis. Now, that's a very optimistic <laughs> statement, right? But I will say, truth or bullshit, April? I think there's some truth to it. But I, mean, I think it could be, it could be getting super oversaturated. You know, you got a lot of people running the same type of trips right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, what do you what do you think? Is it is it true that we're gonna is this industry gonna take off in a way that everybody's hoping? Well, it's gonna expecting. It's gonna, of course, it's gonna keep bringing on the uh, normalization, and right? the farmers markets can happen, and people can touch and interact with the plant. I think that's wonderful. Meet the okay. farmer and see exactly like what goes on. I think like seed to sale tours are really important. Yeah. You know, being able to yeah. ask questions, you know, to the people actually like cultivating and out there, yeah. you know, and if you want to get deeper, you know, you have a deeper tour, like how are seeds made? How are crosses right. made? What is back cross? Like an educational for a B2B or business, business. No, I mean, what if you have, like, just say, what if you have tours where people who are 
let's face it, because we have people that want to get stoned on our tours, right? We're not just like, right. oh, you know, maybe you just want to have a gummy and see how you feel. Because that's not cannabis tourism. I mean, people want to have an right. interaction with the plant and experience with the plant. And I think you have some people come to your first tour, which is like super baseline, general public, you know, kind of tells you about the plant and kind of what you guys do. But then you guys can have a level two that can talk about it a little bit deeper and show people some of that process a little bit deeper. And then I think people would probably go to those too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Totally. Totally. Um, season, what do you think? Is it boom or bust right now for cannabis tourism saving cannabis? I don't think, you know, I think cannabis is saving cannabis like it always has. <laughs> and, um, and that there's a huge, you know, there's a lot more people interested because now they could admit, you know, that they are interested or they could admit that they've had a relationship with the plant. And like April said, people want to interact with the plant. And what I see a lot of cannabis tourism ideal ideas happening, they don't really include an interaction with the plant. A lot of, can, right. you know, it's, it's maybe a, you know, an interaction in a product from the plant, but an actual plant, like getting to like hang out with the plant or even is going to be kind of a more rare experience, I think. Um, and it was really hard for me to get permitted to be able to have guests, you know, non-employees in the, in the farm space, which is really a garden. It's hardly a cultivation facility right. like some people might right. think of, you know, so it was silly for, for me to think that I had to go through all of that hoopla. And I'm hoping that, you know, people see that it is a really important consumer education tool and really the, our consumers being very cultured, um, it, that they will save our industry because they will have had the experience to know the difference. So, you know, you know yeah. in that case, having it's a it's a new form of access and accessibility for sure. Well, I, I mean, I always th I mean, my definition might differ from your definition of cannabis tourism. Right. Uh, but I like to always shout out uh, Dr. Susan Dupage's uh, definition, because I think her definition is an all encompassing one. Um, and that is basically and simply put cannabis from place smoked in place. Right. Like that is. You know, you smoke weed from California when you're in California, and that to, to the extent, if you're out from outside of California, that is cannabis tourism, right? So at, at its most basic, basic underlying common denominator level of understanding, right? Um, people just leaving where they are to come to California and smoke California flower or whatever um, makes it cannabis tourism. Now, one thing you did say, Season, um, I, I, I kind of want to throw this back to season for a second, uh, yeah. April, because season right now, you're talking about getting closer to the plant, right? And you're talking about having plant touching experiences. Now, I, at one point in my time in my life, I would have thought, yes, every cannabis tourism experience needs to have a plant component. You need to get closer to the plant. But now I'm kind of seeing that, you know, there's a lot of opportunity for people to uh, consume and learn about the plant outside of the farm environment. But you are a farmer. And so that is the, the crux of your educational component. Tell me a little bit about how uh, you're modeling your experience or what you're modeling your experience after. And what is it? What is it? How does it feel to people uh, when they go through that experience? Uh, what are you trying to get them to feel when they come closer to the plant? It's really, first of all, let's just, a lot of times they're really, baking in the sun when they first get out of the van they're like really surprised and so I, I i literally help them to feel cooler by like calling them into the shade you know of the plant right. on and that is an experience in itself to like be sheltered by a ganja plant standing over your head like people get overwhelmed by that and that it's like for me it's a full sensory thing like i'm, I'm giving them the model is an educational garden teaching farming practices that, you know, preserve our resources. You know, you can right. call that sustainable farming. There's components of biodynamic farming. There's components of KNF. There's Korean natural farming. That's that's what KNF is. There's components, you know, and, and I guess like now the blanket word you can say is regenerative farming. And there's, you know, so many 
people have ideas of what that is, but basically it's just creating diversity. And I think a lot of people, when they now think of like what a professional cannabis farm looks like, it's really monocropped, you know? And so for me, Mm -hmm. I'm teaching people that there is like, you know, like a mass production of cannabis that's going to be cheap and available. But what I'm growing is like medical grade. That's going to have like a huge variety of cannabinoids and terpenes that you cannot get from a short, fast grow on LED light, you know? So I think that that for me, it's, it's a full sensory experience. And, And we get into so many conversations outside of cannabis, as far as like water conservation, diversity in general, um, you know, and it, And it's awesome that these, you know, that cannabis can get us into like a community building conversation where I'm, we're talking about like, you know, how important it is for us to um, preserve topsoil for the entire population of the earth, you know, and not just because of medical grade cannabis, you know, so like really big conversations that really surpass the cannabis community. And, and that is what is so beautiful about cannabis because it's like expansive like that. And now April, you're doing your tours right now are kind of the other end of the spectrum. Kind of what I discussed earlier, kind of cannabis from place in place, but paired, paired with, with an experience seasonal, right? like, seasonal. Yeah, so, so, so yeah. So, so tell me. All right. That. So one of the things I do, it's uh Buds and Butterflies tour and we live within close proximity to the Pismo Preserve, which is one of the nesting overwintering sites for the monarch butterfly. And it's amazing. We can go to the dispensary, then we can park at the beach and do a really cute coastal, cute, really beautiful coastal hike and have a really few like very scenic spots, you know, to take some pictures and to smoke and stuff. And then I take you to the preserve and you just are overwhelmed with butterflies right now. The numbers just in our little preserve are like 20,000. And in the year 2000, there was only 3,000 that they counted. And now they have several of these sites up the Pacific coast. And the total number right now that they have counted altogether is about 300,000 butterflies, which they haven't had numbers like that since the year 2000. So it's pretty amazing. So you're high, you're out there, you've been like looking at these coastal dunes, you're on the ocean, you're walking on this elevated boardwalk and you have these beautiful giant eucalyptus trees. And then you just start seeing this fluttering and you get into the preserve and there's just so many butterflies just fluttering around, just fluttering around. And then of course they cluster on each other and, you know, depending on where you're standing and where the sun's hitting them, you can really take some nice pictures. And if you are a photographer, that's one of the things you love to do. That's a great spot. So that's a seasonal thing. And then of course I do my cannabis and yoga combinations because it goes very well together. And I've been teaching yoga for a super long time. But the thing that I think is cool and that it reminds me of what you have going on here in Slow County, we have this thing called the Slow County Farm Trail. Now, I know you really can't see that too well, but the Slow County Farm Trail. And they've got like agricultural education, farm tours, tastings, hands-on workshops, private groups, farm-to-table pantries, and table-to-farm dinners and stuff. And so they've... But like general ag, though, and, and they're lumping in cannabis, Well, right? they're not yet, but I'm about to reach out to all these people and see if I can get be involved in any way, shape, or, or form. I already uh, made a connection with the, our local honey farm that I want to work with. They make a CBD honey, but I would like to do some tastings and pairings with their honeys up on their farm, and people can learn about some honeybee keeping and, you know, how to care for honeybees if you see them out in the wild and maybe they need a drink of water or something. Well, let's go a little deeper because I think this is a great start to the conversation, right? So one of the things we're looking, we're kind of looking inward now at ourselves as cannabis tourism operators and put yourself in, in the position of yourself, right? Like think about yourself and think about where, what you've done as a, a tourism operator in the past few years since we started this four or five years. I know all of us have been doing this for a very long time. Um, so in those years, um, how have you changed? And I'll go to season first. Like, what are you seeing? Where, where are you seeing changes occurring in the way you deliver your service 
that you feel need to happen to stay current with what you're doing? Hmm. It's interesting. That's a, that's a a lot of question there because it's like, you know, what am I doing to stay current and where did I start from was the question. Like, what have I changed? I mean, really, really like what, me, where have you, where have you been and where are you going with what you're delivering? Yeah. For me, I have need to, I, I, I can remind myself that most people want a pretty blanket, like basic knowledge when they come, like I can overload somebody and I, with too much knowledge at once that it's hard for them to absorb it. And so I would like to have like an over, just something that they could look at something that they can hold in their hand with some vocabulary, something that they could take away if they wanted with the vocabulary, something because I need, I need more ways to get people engaged with the garden than just talking with them. I definitely every time try to make people feel like a guest rather than a visitor. And, and there are certain things that I repeat, of course, but a lot of times the tours are so small that I am able to really cater each engagement to their personal interest. Um, and when, and I've noticed that like when I have had some larger groups and the largest group I had was the nature summit. And these were like doctors with their adult children who travel, you know, all over the country every summer to a different spot. And so it was a different level than most of the visitors who are coming, who are like cannabis centric. Like these people were right. on, on a multi tour, like they, they would be at a farm, you know, thing, April, you know, where they're going from place to place and cannabis wasn't necessarily their fam- favorite topic. And I was nervous about speaking to s- such a, you know, a diverse group of, you know, well-educated people who are older than me. And we had such a good conversation. And so, and we really got deep and, and I could see that I like that people's minds, you know, it was, it was like normalization happening in front of my face where I could see somebody come like skeptical and kind of like, definitely I could tell maybe not their favorite part of their experience overall. And then when they left, they were like, you know, getting my contact information and really, really, you know, I felt made a connection. So for me, you know, just learning how to be more comfortable and know that, you know, people are there because they want to be mostly. And, um, that I want them to have a little bit more of a takeaway feeling like en- enriched as far as vocabulary or knowledge to be able to engage with a bud tender or even just tell their friend about their experience, you know, that they can say like, right. I went there and I learned this and that, whatever right. it may be. So, you know, I, how I about you hand, hand materials. So, but, so more support, so more support. Yeah. Like maybe a cool pamphlet, yeah. something that people yes. will want to keep. Yeah. Yes. And people want to keep. Yeah. Um, so April, where are you at with that? Like you started this a lot, a lot longer than both season and I have a lot long ago, a lot longer ago. And so now you are in a position where you're actually in a, in a, in San Luis oh, Obispo yeah. down in, 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 and now you're doing things that are kind of different from where you started just a couple well, of years ago, a few years like back. So what are you doing differently? This. Cause I started yeah. off doing activities and tours when I worked in uh, hospitality as a, activities director at a resort. So I would lead people on hikes and I would teach yoga classes and do tie dyes by the pool and make salsa and teach people about like foods of the Southwest. Right. Okay. Cause it was in Arizona, but then I started cannabis tourism and I was booking just the trips for the Amsterdam cannabis stuff. And that was pre-packaged tours with like, you know, very stoner specific and also like making it easy for people to travel. You know, you have, you can do payment plans and I learned about that. And then, you know, how to like construct and to build an international tour so that people who have never had an international travel experience are doing that. And then when I started higher weight travel, I was like, started with the travel agent part of things and being a travel agent is like Uh kind of sucky, honestly, guys, because people want to just get information from you and then they don't want to book. You get shitty commissions. Sorry, airlines, but come on, step it up. Real talk. Um, You know, you get people, they want, oh, can you tell me some names of some hotels? Oh yeah, I could, but then what? You know, so I'm trying to, I was trying to figure out different ways to, you know, at least let me get something. And then you have hotels um, <clears throat> like the one I used to work with in Jamaica that doesn't want to pay me commissions. And I have booked so many people there and 
Where's my commissions? Do you think I want to have retreats there anymore? No, no, I don't. Do you think I want to refer people to go there? No, no, I don't. So that was a really shitty slap in yeah. the face, you know, because I felt like I kind of put them on the map because they had their first article written about them. In Forbes, Forbes, right? Yeah. Forbes, yeah. And, you know. So that's shit. Yeah, that's awful. Right? And then. So, so pay your people. Be responsible for what you owe. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of sucky. It just makes me not want to work there. It's, you know, whatever that is. And then I realized, though, that. I do like small tours. I don't necessarily always need to do like international. You have to get an airline ticket to fly places because it kind of goes against how I feel ecologically, you know, and I struggle with that. But I do like doing small cultivated things with small groups of people where people we can all connect and people can make friends with other people. And who knows what will happen on those small cultivated trips. So small groups are my vibe. And if people you know, really serious about booking a vacation. I'm open to consulting with them and helping them build the vacation of their dreams. But, you know, I don't just like waste all this energy giving people all this information, emails back and forth for nothing. And yeah, I, I th- yeah. And that's that. I, th- I think for, I think for me, it's a little different than both of you actually. Um, right now, my, I'm tailoring my tours. Uh, I listen to my customers. I see what kind of their underlying needs are, what they, the feedback they give me. And then every year I go back and kind of re, retool my tours. One of the things I've actually not been, you know, I hear a lot of customers, they take my tour, they say, oh, you know, it's a little pricey or maybe the price point's a little high for them. But what I'm looking forward to here in uh, in 2023 and, and the season to come is uh, lowering my prices a little bit, making it more accessible for everybody to take my tour. Uh, when we started the business, when I started the business and running tours, you know, you, you're kind of, you're, you're learning and you're making mistakes and you're spending money and doing things that maybe you don't need to do right up front. But ultimately, like a lot of the learning that I did um, allows me to save money on the tour allows me to make a more efficient tour. So over time I've been able to get better at being more efficient and better at being a tour guide totally. and keeping to my time schedules. And so, I mean, even just taking an hour off of, of moving people, you know, from one farm to the other and then back to the, you know, that, that 30 minutes up to the farm, 30 minutes. If I'm using a different farm that now I don't need to spend a full extra hour, I can lower the cost because the bus is one, one less hour. You know, I get everybody back sooner. Uh, I think the general consensus is that, you know, an eight, nine hour day is pretty much the limit anybody can take of me and anybody else in the bus. So it's just like, you know, making sure, um, you know, that, that the experience has been tightened up in a way that allows more people to enjoy it. And so I think that's my goal for 2023 in how I deliver my services against folks, against the, the ones I've been delivering to folks in the past. So I think that that's, I think we've, we've set, set out like three very reasonable and very meaningful, you know, ways in which we're making changes. I guess my next question, I'll, I'll throw this one for the sake of di- diversifying the conversation. April, why don't we start with you on this next one? What are some of your biggest challenges uh, when you go to set up a tour from the very beginning, whether it's a repeat tour in a new season or um, or a, a tour that you're running for the first time, what have been the biggest sticking points for you throughout this whole thing? Oh, marketing has been my suckiest thing because I, I put ads out like in – some of the local like guides that go to out to all the tourists, you know, and oh. had that they have them at the California visitor center. And that really didn't get me much traction and just, you know, social media doesn't get me much traction because I'm shadow banned. So I'm just trying to step up my street team and, and be out there, be at events and do things and connect with people that way. So that's been my hardest thing. How about you season? I guess I'm lucky in the way that I really just get to put down my tools and be like, hi, welcome to my farm. And I don't have to do any other pre, um, you know, 
coordinating it. You guys have so many working parts and you have all these different personalities with bigger groups who've traveled maybe even farther. I can imagine the pressure of, you know, putting that many people in, in a small space and for a small, you know, at any length of time. So for me, you know, I guess the challenge for me is really trying to understand like how much I can do of it. You know, like last year I was just, I never, I really challenged myself to like never say no to somebody who wanted to come for it for. And it was really fun. And, but I, you know, I really just have to put down what I'm doing and, and talk to them and get right back to it. It's like, I can't, sometimes I'm so vibed up that I need a little bit of decompression or sometimes like if it's a big, that big group, I like set a big table and like had flowers and all sorts of stuff, you know, and I'm thinking I can't do that every time, but because it was a big group, I was getting paid more. So it was worth it, you know? So I have to understand that what I'm doing right now is, a consumer education outreach program. And it's nice to have an income from that. You know, it's marketing that I'm getting paid for rather than having to pay for. Heck yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, that's unique in, in that situation, but learning how it's going to bring a value, continue to bring a value to me and not going to take away from my obligation as a farmer. Cause at first right. I'm not going to have anything to show or you know, it's not going to do me any good if I don't have a product to sell. My tagline is more than a product to sell and an experience to share. Well, like right now, I basically am doing more of the experience sharing than selling the product. Right, right, <laughs> right, like, right. Well, I mean, right. Tagline, maybe, so I kind of did that to myself. Yeah. Well, that that's a real challenge too, right? And that's almost like a, like a, legis- a regulatory challenge, right? You can't sell weed directly to these people uh, under the current system, right? Under the current model here in California. No, so this is what sucks, right? That, yeah. That's a challenge. That's my biggest challenge. Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, no, that's, that's why I want to connect with these people on this farm tour, you know, and just have more of that. And some of these people have farm stays and all that kind of stuff. So it's just... My county is a little bit reluctant to cannabis in general, so I've just been, yeah, you know, just. Yeah. And my county is like, you know, there's a ton of farming going on in Humboldt County. Really great ag people, ton of, you know, beef producers. There's tons of dairy, you know, and we, I'm sure there's farm tours going on like that, but it, like cannabis farmers and ag we don't really hang out with each other. Yeah. You know? And it's like hard to matriculate that. And that's like a double challenge for me because my background is ag, you know, I went, I was 4-H and I am, you know, originally a garden educator with community gardens and teaching kids about vegetables. So I have that experience, but, and it almost like, because it's cannabis, I like lost my traction with that other group in a way. Like I've lost my credibility because I switched to cannabis and now I'm like, you know, and, and the cannabis people don't understand the concepts of like farm tours and these like, you know, really hokey craft, I, you know, things that we do at, you know, at like, Oh yeah, craft. that's definitely you know, awesome. it's funny. It's funny you mention like, that. When I, stuff. like we do this, this is what it is. Yeah. This is what we, when I, yeah, when I, when I set out, when I set out to do, my very first farm tours or my very first tours in general, my seed to sale tours, my farm tours, I had a very almost like strict vision for what I wanted and what this could all be and what was right and what was wrong to me. And over time, I guess I just got like a little bit more malleable in what I was doing. And I think that that was super important because it allows me now, I mean, like breaking down the definition of breaking down the walls or the barriers to the definition of cannabis tourism allows me to have more fun doing what I'm doing, allows me to change things, allows me to try new things. And I feel like if you're not remaining nimble, if you're not remaining ever changing in the face of a, of a, of a marketplace and a consumer base that is also ever changing, you're going to be left in the dust. And that's like real, real, real talk because, you know, we've seen a lot of our colleagues who have started done their thing and faded away. And, you know, it's sad because 
the people right here in front of me are constantly changing and that's why we're still here, right? Like we're constantly adding new things, doing new things, trying new things. And I think that that's super important to remaining relevant in this whole thing, right? Am I, am I right? Am I wrong? You're right. You have to try new things and put yourself out there and just throw all the spaghetti to the wall and see what sticks. Well, and we're, I mean, let's face it. We're trying to be like, like for me, I'm a destination, like some sort of like Humboldt County attraction. So I got to like keep it current and fun. You know, it's like I have to keep it interesting because there there are a lot of farms people can visit. So like, why would they visit mine? You know, or, you know, and, and I guess I've learned as the as the industry has gone through its volatility, you know, that the story, like the, the provenance, the authenticity is nearly the product that has the value right. now. And, right. Right. and it's like, people are like searching for that right now. It's like, as they, yeah. they're also the, like, there's people who have, who are, have had such a close relationship with the plant and they're like, you know, imagined what legalization was and they're like, what, this is yeah. it. You know, like, and I have so many consumers yeah. who are so more cultured than any of the industry ever gives people credit for it. And we have to remind yeah. like most of these people have been having a personal relationship with the plant and they're can as long as they're, they're, yeah. Yeah, right? as longer than they've been in business. And so it's like, yeah. you can't really fool these folks. And it's just, it's so validating to me to see them doing the work to seek that authenticity out, to pay the money, to take a trip to, you know, and that, I guess that is could be the saving grace of the cannabis industry. If they're talking about tourism, it's that people care enough to seek it out like that, you know, and that yeah. the fact that they do care enough and they will spend the money and talk their husband into it or whatever. Or talk yeah. Their into there's it. A, yeah, there's an there's an yeah there's an important takeaway <laughs> from what you said there, season. I think the important takeaway is that you know, despite we are, despite us being in an educative position, an edu like educational position to our consumer guests, mm -hmm. um, they're not dummies. No. They're not idiots. A lot of them are very cultured mm -hmm. and they're looking for that next level. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to be able to deliver that. We can't just be like, here's the weed grow. There are the plants. These are plants. <laughs> like, you know, it's not for some of these people, it's, it's their livelihood, right? It's it's the way they make money. It's the way they live. And they come on your tour to learn something above and beyond what they're doing. So, True. Yeah. you know, that really puts us on the spot, right? Like, you got to be the authority, right? It's, yeah. Yeah, so. definitely. I've been like, uh, like, I've never been like embarrassed of my garden, you know, but there's definitely times that I'm like, uh, like nearly almost apologizing or make, and then I realize like, Nobody sees those things. Like I'm my worst critic and that it's better to like keep the vibe up and, and not be like trying to like make excuses for my shortcomings, right. you know, cause nobody right. wants, I'm not seeking pity there. <laughs> like, that's not yeah. the vibe. And also people don't notice, right? People yeah, don't people get don't notice. And yeah. they don't notice it until I'm like apologizing or being like, well, <laughs> you know, so I just have to like, you know, everybody's happy to be there and they're really definitely there to have a good time. And that's April. up to me. <laughs> question for april i guess in the same vein um april when you've gone and um now, now you're you've, you've been doing this at to many different capacities not just directing tours you've been booking tours you've been doing a lot of travel booking prior to uh you know being with higher you know being kind of a tour director or tour leader um at, for highway travel now my question is yeah right my question being um april how do you manage uh, the haters, like this is a real question. Like there are people that no, will try really? to. I mean, yeah, I didn't know you, I had try. Any I mean, there are people... good. No, answer. no, no. But I mean, like we'll there are people. I mean, I'll, I'll pull it back. Really? I'll pull back. So, season and I had a conversation earlier today, and this is again oh, fun, shit. right? Fun talk. So, season, hey, season and I had a conversation earlier today, and she said that she has gotten basically mansplained for lack of a better term, she's been mansplained to by people who've never run a single tour in their lives, yet somehow she's got something to learn from them. I see that as very challenging for you guys, for me, for everybody. Do you experience that yourself, and what does that feel like? No, but I would have to say, 
kind of like the dude that got mad at me because I didn't want, I was trying to figure out where to set up my tent and I didn't ask him for his advice and he threw a temper tantrum and threw himself against a redwood tree and slumped down like a baby and got mad. That's what that reminds me of. So, you know, haters. That's your haters version of a hater. Are fans that just love, love too much. That's an icy response. I love Why? It. I got that so from icy. I got that from Danny Danko. Oh, okay. A long time ago. Big up, yeah, Danny. Yeah, it was from Danny, and he's like, "Oh, haters, they're fans that just love too much." And I was like, "Oh, that's a good one." Uh, well, I mean, you experienced this season. Tell us a little bit about you know what you're getting on on your end, right? I mean, for me. You know, I guess when we were speaking about it earlier, I was saying I you I used to pipe up and say like what you know, hey, and like assert myself, and I've learned for my own self interest that it's better for me to gather information Ooh, than yeah, to yeah, think, yeah. Ooh. and that. I like I opened this whole thing. I'm learning from you guys. Like I look, I need a framework to exist in because I'm like, just like she said, throwing spaghetti at the wall being like, I hope this works. And it's like really growing to a rate that I'm like, God, I better get it professional about this. Cause I have something going here. Yeah. You know? And so for me, fuck yeah. I have to just gather this information and say, thank you, sir, for including me. <laughs> and uh, oh, it's, support the oh, support, that reminds support me. Be supportive, you know. Yeah, and, and yeah, just okay. try and, huh. and not. I don't want to ice anybody else out, and I don't want to be iced out. I know I'm I was still iced out. I've been knowledge iced out and, and, I, and I've dude. had to take responsibility. I've I've had to take responsibility for that happening to me too, and know that I, you know, I I set that situation up by not the acquiescing isn't necessarily a weakness and that it can be right. if I want to be again let's like being a host it's about keeping the vibe up yeah and so and keeping yeah. it on like a chill camaraderie we're all like here hanging out having a good time we're just and, I gotta you know, tell you that's that's hard that's well, real effing hard so- like the last thing I want to do is be like the angry woman no. who's like nobody listens. To me. Yeah, not on a tour. You can't do that. You got to vent that out with your homies. No, later on. nobody likes anger. Nobody likes negativity. No one wants that. And nobody likes. And then yeah, if you got yeah, someone totally. like that nobody on likes... tour, you got to redirect them. But okay, yeah. maybe I did have a hater. Maybe I had a person say to me that my tours weren't my oppressed tours weren't like blah 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 blah, and. I maybe reacted a certain way and had a meeting with it about that person. And guess what? Maybe I did get iced out. Yeah. But right. I have to advocate like, for right. myself. I was the only one doing that shit. Yeah. Like, well, I can, you and I, we could keep our own personal opinions to ourselves and just, yeah, yeah, thanks. Ooh. It's all right. Lessons <laughs> well, learned. Well, I, I, I also, I, I realized like, while, it doesn't while... have any good to like try to like, take a hater somebody who's trying to challenge me to like meet them with a challenge is has never really worked that well for me <laughs> right right no and it's 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 hard sometimes right a lot a lot of times you want to get reactive and defensive right yeah. like that's well, the natural the, source, the natural like the per- if it... right but you know i like i like seasons perspective. me too it's very mature very very come full circle perspective of like understanding your adversary and just being like, cool. Yeah. Oh, that's I very love much love Bruce Lee. We'll be it. like water, you know? man. Jeet Kune Do. <laughs> yeah. um, I got to get back into my Jeet Kune Do. I have a copy right here. A lot of times I feel like my life is raking water all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like just trying so hard and never achieving, but you know, real talk, right? Like, um, I, I think this is this is great. I love this so far. We're about halfway through our time, and this is going swimmingly well. I love this. Good. Um, so yeah, so let's 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 move on to another another topic. So 2023 has a lot of great things around the bend. We've been hearing a lot of craziness around. This is the year of tourism. This is the year of you know, the year we have this breakout cannabis tourism year. We've been held back from because because of pandemic and post pandemic and all this. I have my own opinions. We'll go around the circle uh, in, in the group, but 
tell me a little bit about season. We'll start with you. Um, a little bit about when you are examining kind of the, the projections that you're hearing, that your data you're pulling together and kind of your research, reading this or that, um, what are you, we have a lot of optimism as an industry, but what are you think, thinking and seeing as kind of the real, like how, how is your mindset around how much how much business you're getting this year in 2023? Like what, what are you expecting and what do you think is realistic versus other years? Um. I am, I feel like there was a super peak in my glamping business during COVID. And then there was a lull after when everybody had went back to work and they didn't, they weren't just getting free money in the mail. <laughs> and, so, right. and so, um, I am anticipating it to pick up some more because I've gotten some d- different press. I've got, I think people are now getting in their mind in the ether, like glamping at a weed farm is a thing I can do. I want to do that. And so I'm expecting more people to um, want to do it. I'm expecting more people also to set up their farm to do it. And um, I'm expecting a lot more directives, like people who don't have a destination or who like, like you guys directing people where to go. Like I'm going to, I'm hoping to expand my, you know, collaborative efforts into getting people from outside the county to come. And, you know, I'm really happy with hip camp. I don't feel the urge to like expand on hip camp. I think there's a few other places that have like listed me who just promote the hip camp listing like bud and breakfast. They don't do any direct bookings and stuff. So I'm expecting more, more apps like that to pop up and, you know, hopefully a little bit more press, you know, my sister is getting married and they are considering having the reception at the property. So I'm really hoping we could do that because I've always wanted to have a wedding here and I think it would be so fun to, you know, oh, do that. So God, I'm kind that'd of be so magical. No, I really, 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 I've been on this bathroom and shipping container courtyard for like over a year. My dog getting his leg broken, cut into my shipping container fund, which, you know, I love my dog, no complaints, but I'll get that shipping container. <laughs> um, April, that that's a great segue into another question. That's kind of in line with this one. What role do you think, um, D, as a DMCs, right? Like uh, DMCs are, can you, what role do DMCs and travel agencies and particularly um, like county uh, tourism boards and state tourism boards, what are, what role do they have to play that they're not playing? Well, it depends on the county, right? And it depends on the city because Grover Beach is super welcoming and that they had me in the California business, I mean, California visitor centers and <clears throat> welcome me with open arms. You just have to be honest and go talk to everybody and just, you know, see what you could do within like what they think is okay. Right. And, and get out there and do it, which is what I'm doing. And so County now things are opening up though. So I feel more comfortable talking to people. So back to you season, that same question, yeah. like where are, where are people, where are where are the organizations, let's say, that are supposed to be promoting this sort of thing? Where are they helping, hurting, dropping the ball? What are you experiencing in Humboldt? What are you experiencing? What do you think that this 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 whole like subgenre of marketing uh, within the cannabis tourism space, like these? It's crazy because I feel like I worked really hard to get all licensed and like present and I've gotten good reviews, but it seems, and Humboldt County has embraced me. I have to say like, you know, I got that grant, hum, the, the county has, but it was like the, the way the ordinance was written really is exclusive, really kind of stifles my ability to work with agencies outside of the county. And I think that that's really the absolute wrong approach in a tourism space because so like a silent approach is what you're experiencing. Yeah. And it really, I mean, and I, and it's so hard for me to speak again, you know, not against, but speak up about this because the person I work with within the County, I have a great relationship and I love him dearly and I never want to offend him or make him think that I'm like, wish I could, you know, 
work with someone else or something. Cause it's not that at all, you know, it's, and it's like, sometimes I'm like, why am I bitching about it? If I love the person I'm working with, but well, it's it, not that it's, it's the bureaucracy it makes sense. And I just don't know who or what I'm missing out on. And it kind of makes it hard for me to outreach to companies like you, April, because basically it's like, even if I wanted to, I couldn't work with you. And that just makes zero sense, especially since I worked so hard to get, they made it nearly impossible to get permitted. And then they give it to me and then they're like, but you can only work with this one guy who's awesome. But you know, it just doesn't. Yeah. It's like, that's messed up. I feel it's limiting. Yeah. I'll, also, I think about like, okay, also if I whine about this and they're like, yeah, open it up season, you know, um, what can I do more tours? Am I, am I bitching about something that I couldn't even fulfill if I, if I got more tours, you know, or if more people were, and what I'm thinking is it's not that it's that I want more tours. I want more diversity. Yeah. I want to meet more people and I want to know, you know, I, I think that there's, I don't know. I feel like I'm probably missing out on a lot more people who I could connect with. And that to me, it doesn't seem like any other American business model I can find that like you can only- not free yeah. market. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it just makes, I just don't even know how they got away with it. <laughs> yeah. That's very stupid. Short sighted. <laughs> that was an icy comment. I'll give you two points for the ice man, right? Wow. Ice woman right there, I should say. Uh, that was icy. I was like, I don't even know how they got away with it. Ugh. Well, <laughs> who hey, voted that in real talk? That's me. If that was a good idea, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, from my perspective, I mean, I, I've been running in Mendo uh, for several years now. And I guess really the only, they've got two rules, right? Like generally speaking, there's two cannabis rules for tourism that I abide by, and that is pay your taxes and don't go to more more than don't go to far more than twice a week. And I manage, right? I manage. I got a bunch of farmers. I don't need to. I mean, I got more farmers hitting me. That's another thing. I've got more farmers hitting me up today. Like probably once a week, I get a call at least once a week. I get a call from a new company or a new farmer that's like, hey, can you bring tours here? It's like, because yeah, like, it's, yeah. Because it's been touted as it's going to save the cannabis industry. And, you know, oh, that's back, to, yeah, and, back to our and, original question. Like, please let me. And, I, and it's awesome that Mendo has made has made it so easy for people to engage who want to engage. I know the reasons why they, you know, like I, I want to back up against like, you know, why are they why did they make it so hard to get permitted? And, and the difference between being able to only go to any farm you want and to a, a week, like for me, there were times when I was giving 10 tours a week and I was so happy to do that. I would have been mad just like, I'm like, I'm feeling like I'm losing business. I would have been mad if the, if the County said, okay, you got this permit, but you can only do two a week. And it's because I'm on the main highway that I can, afford the traffic and most of the farms that have been permitted in Humboldt County are on dirt roads and residential areas and even two extra people and they're also very private even if they're not in the cannabis industry they might still have home grows it's a very private community up here we don't want looky loos we don't want people we also are afraid about evacuations as fire we like we don't want a bunch of people that we have to go save in the forest who don't know how to get out too so I mean there's reasons I don't want to say like they don't know what they're talking they're all, about. They're all, they're all, some of them are unfounded, but sure, we'll give yeah. them that. I've really had to decipher, like, what am I asking for? Why am I feeling like I've been, you know, stifled in some way? And there's a lot of times, you know, grass is greener. I'm literally on the Humboldt and Mendo County line, but I'm in Humboldt. I'm the, you know, and I'm constantly looking over to Mendo being like, God, Mendo has it so awesome. But is it a grass is greener situation, <laughs> you know? Because well, honestly, you know, it would be mad if they if if they were like, "Oh, you can only do two a week," that would not jive with me, you know. I mean, again, it's a difference. It's a, and my model is a little different than Matt's. You know, yeah. uh, humble cannabis stores. Um, my model is not as accessible. Let's just say, I mean, I'm a much more expensive product. I travel a lot greater distance to yeah. bring my 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 guests to the farm farmlands right yeah. and so um the the model kind of 
works well for me and I've adopted it and I've adopted the rules as they work well for me. And same thing for you in, in humble. I mean, like, and one day for, you know, when they, when farms start kicking online for, for April, you know, she'll be able to, to do the same oh, to yeah. some degree, but I guess, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this whole scenario and I'm, and I'm thinking like, you know, I've talked about it on the podcast in the past. We, I've said it, you know, cannabis in America for at least a little while is going to look like 50 shades of cannabis legalization, 50 different versions, 50 <laughs> flavors of, of legalization. Right. Um, and so in 50 different States, but again, that's kind of the same for us as operators, right? Like every County is bound to make their own little caveats and changes and updates that we have to play into and dive into and understanding those and knowing how to play it, play them and, and being smart enough to be able to be nimble and make the money you need to make despite those rules is the cool part, right? Like that's what really f- is going to drive us to be better at what we do. I feel April, did you want to say something? No, I, I, wanna... I agree with you. And I also think like, oh, I don't remember what I was going to say. It's all good. Well, I feel moment. Like, like the Humboldt County, like the people who are in charge of tourism have this like crazy idealism that they're going to resurface the entire, like give Humboldt County some sort of facelift and also cure homelessness before they're going to launch a cannabis tourism campaign because they're worried about cannabis stoners being like riffraffs for like reggae on the river. And they don't want to open up Humboldt County to be what's left over at reggae on the river. You know, Uh, I don't know. So judgmental. It's like very judgmental. It's super. You know, when I was, and and, I mean, I'm kind of speculating probably, but at the same time, I feel like definitely they, feel like that's going to get a facelift and i'm like no people want the natural beauty like i don't know i don't know what they yeah, think, I think, yeah, the I think a lot of times of beauty, a lot of time, yeah. like, we're never yeah, going to be I, 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 no and i think i think there's got to be a lot of realist uh, there, there's got to be a realistic expectation of oneself as as a community right like you know we're not like cannabis cannabis tourism is a not going to fix this problem of the market falling apart no. Cannabis tourism is not going to fix the homelessness in in Humboldt. No. <laughs> Cannabis no. tourism is not going to do a lot of things. But I think people are like, well, we have to set all of these things straight before we open the door for cannabis tourism. I think that's that's a miss the boat yeah. like way of thinking. Like that's another way of like kicking the can down the road and not doing what you need to do. It's almost like afraid to. Go, you know, to like come out to the party in a way because you're just not. You think like it's just yeah, it's not like right or something. Heads, like you just you can't like, walk out. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like actually, if you open the doors and are like, "Hey, welcome, check it out." People are so stoked, and like if we don't hurry up and like get the track, like we're losing traction already. And as like one of three in Humboldt County, I'm a little bit like, dude, I'm not the only story. I tell that to every single person, like there are so many people like me out there. Like there's a huge diversity of us and all of us have a cool story and all of us have been like pioneers and like outlaws, all of it, you know, like most, uh, most of us here have this amazing story, but it's a bummer that like, I'm the only person sanctioned to engage with people. And it's a little bit of a burden in a way, because it's like, I think like if I continue to grow, like I did last year, 150% increase, which is, you know, crazy. I can't, there's no way I'll be You'll able break. to all those people. You'll so, break. Yeah. You won't be able to farm anymore. Well, and then Matt, oftentimes Matt's like season, but if all these other farms come, like it's, it's the circuit of where I am, like through the Grove, like the end of the County, it's like the destination and like being on the highway is really good. He's like season. I've been to other farms and he's like, you're still my favorite, which is so flattering, you know, but it's also, it's like, it's it's his he's got that loop down he's got the you know the trip yeah. down, and i see it works for so many reasons and that's why i pursued the tourism thing but for me i'm like please let more people um you know be able to and then most everybody's like but we'll still come visit you and i'm like well dang you know <laughs> Well, that's, that's a good feeling, right? Like that's a good feeling to know you have some longevity in the game just <laughs> yeah. because you're excellent. But, um, I mean, like, you know, I want to talk shit a little bit for a second because, okay. you know, one of the things I was always told, you mentioned it a second ago, like I was always told this is not, 
you know, humble local people would tell me like, this is not your story to tell. Yeah. And I, and I was saying, hold on. Like, I'm not here to tell your story. I'm here to bridge the four hour, three hour gap between the city of San Francisco and lower Humboldt, Southern Humboldt. And so my role very defined was to provide access to a community of people so that they could tell their story. And that was never anything. There was never any other plan, but I feel like a lot of times that was like the sand that was being kicked up in my eyes because they're jealous. People are either jealous or just afraid. I don't know what the We're, fuck the fear is all well, about. The thing of it is, that, like, everybody has a different story. Don't you think, April, that everybody has a, an interesting yeah. story to tell? Like, you can hear the one, three different people t- tell the same story, and it's going to be different, different every time, you know? I had to put my phone right. on the charger. Sorry. So it's like, no okay. worries. I Shroom, it says back there behind oh, you. Is shalom. That what it, no, it says hello. Shalom. Hello. <laughs> She can shroom. Yeah, I see I'm shroom. Shot I'm seeing shroom. shroom. <laughs> well, that's also very peaceful. <laughs> well, we're down to our last five minutes of the hour, and I want to take a minute okay. um, to, first of all, I've thank got you guys for impromptu jumping on this one, jumping on this call and jumping on this conversation, because I I think this has been a brilliant hour of just raw unadulterated emotion about what it is we do every day. And I think that this is as valuable as anything we do, right? Not only uh, like, not only to be valuable for ourselves and kind of talk about these things, but also kind of an inward facing, a voyeuristic inward look at, at what we do and giving people an opportunity to understand how we think about what we do, because it will allow people to put themselves in the frame of mind of a cannabis tourism operator, if that's what they're trying to do. And what I, what I would like to see people do is take more chances, take more risks. And I mean, season, you took hella risks. We all took risks, right? Doing this first, doing this before anybody had any sorts of rules before there were any regulations, just, just doing it, doing it. And so my, that. my challenge is to everybody. Yeah. My challenge is just like, do it. Let them slap you on the wrist later. Like if there's no Better rule about it, they'll write a rule and then they'll ask call for you. Permission. Yeah, yeah. Well, so you know, I have felt that the county has been like, well, honestly, we don't know. And now that you have, you know, this under your belt, like I'm, they have allowed me to speak, and I think that they are open and malleable, you know, and they're gonna. And so it's important for us to do it and and not totally disenfranchised from them like they we need to be giving them this knowledge and we need to be asserting ourselves as yeah, the advisors yeah, it's true really like they're not yeah. they're not out there doing it but and- like anything else but like anything else in the cannabis industry people set themselves up in front of us as gatekeepers and that is some <laughs> absolute bullshit because the gatekeepers sure. most of the time have a singular view and a singular reason for being gatekeepers. And most of it is narcissistic. And so I think that what we should be doing is open sourcing this shit, like making it so that everybody has the ability to do it, telling people how we do business, hoping people adopt our model and get creative from there, because that's the only way we're going to build this thing and be successful at saving this industry with cannabis tourism. Yeah. And Miracle on 34th street, that stuff. Yeah. Right. So anyway, like, yeah. uh, like, you know, we're, we're, we're coming to, we're coming to the end of our hour. We have about a minute and a half left. I want to give everybody 20 seconds to give me their high on tour hot take uh, season. You go first, April, you finish up and then I'll, I'll tail end it and we'll, we'll wrap up the episode and, uh, and we'll see each other next week. But season high on tour, hot take real okay. talk, take go for it. I think everybody should seek out the knowledge so they really feel cultured. You know, there's so many opportunities to take whatever you're interested in the next to the next level. And, you know, whether it be poetry, art, you know, I don't know, sewing, whatever, knitting, growing weed. Yeah, Yeah. do it. Take take the class, take the trip culture yourself you're not going to learn anything on your phone or listening to a podcast sorry love you guys that's true <laughs> yeah it's totally, just, totally. podcasts are there just to shed a little light to get you out there doing stuff thank you for and that's the truth 
Yeah. Really? <laughs> well, this one, this one's got our faces to it. Another Last added level. So. Okay. <laughs> you know, be the watercolor of your own life and say yes more. Wow. Wow. All right. For 2023, I'm going to be more myself, make it more accessible, and love more. That's good. That's very good. Yay. So on that note, thank you so much, everybody. April season, it's awesome. We will be back again on random terms with this talking situation. And we'll see everybody soon. And uh, love you all out there in the internet lands. And love the, you guys, the two of you guys as well. The, the two big rains coming up. Season, be careful with all those trees around you. I know, right? It is. It's been. It has Music. been. A this is gonna be a big fucking lie, whopper. But this one's yeah. gonna be like a super big one. This is a big one. This is a big one. Yeah. When I came back from Anderson Valley yesterday, or I came into Anderson Valley yesterday and back today, um, I went through several rivers across the road, across 128. I went over some trees. Scary. You know, like it, it was fun. It was an exciting. Yeah. Don't. Not made for a Honda Civic, but you gotta make sure you have a big truck. That can that can handle those things. I don't have a Honda Civic, just for the record, but you know I made it. I survived. All wheel drive, four wheel drive. We made it happen, um, guys. Thank you so much. We love you all. Um, have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you all soon on the trail of cannabis tours. Bye bye. Thank you.